Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Mena. I am the Public Information Officer for the City of Atlantic City and the Executive Office of Mayor Marty Small Sr. We're here today to discuss the upcoming weather events scheduled for tomorrow, Friday, January 7th, and the city's response for those snow efforts. Uh, so to kick us off, we'll hear from Mayor Small with uh, some opening remarks, followed by a quick weather briefing, discussions of the Public Works response efforts, followed by coordination on behalf of emergency management. Mayor? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a great day here in the city of Atlantic City. Can we say great day? Great, great, great day. day. Can we say go birds? Go birds. Go birds. Go birds. <laughs> no, um, I'm Mayor Marty Small Senior, Mayor of the great city of Atlantic City we're um, having this 2 p.m. update to inform the public on the incoming storm scheduled to hit uh, a little after midnight tonight to early tomorrow morning, and it could be a 12-hour event. The city of Atlantic City uh, will be prepared. You will hear from our leadership team, public works, emergency management, and police as we prepare ourselves for this storm. We will come back to you again tonight with the latest update and at that time, decisions will be made on, on as far as city services tomorrow um, and, and, and everything else. But this update is the latest national update as of 5 a.m. Uh, this morning. Um, our chief and our um, legendary meteorologist, uh, who you're going to hear from after me, will give us the latest. And as I stated, we'll make an informed decision um, around 6 p.m. on what tomorrow looks like uh, for all. I just want to know and I want to commend again the hard work and tremendous effort by our public works department, um, specifically specifically our leadership team, Director Paul Jerkins, Assistant Director Crystal Lewis, and Superintendent Ahmed Abdullah, and all the men and women of the public works department who braved the storm. It was a difficult storm, um, and the timing, as I said before, the ice, you know, there's, there's certain things that you can do. It's a science to it. And considering with our public works team, our contractors, and uh, the New Jersey Department of Transportation, I spoke to Governor Mur Murphy personally four times throughout, and he pledged support, and the Department of Transportation uh, came through. And we won't hesitate to use those resources if we need them again. So again, we want to give you uh, updated information to prepare for the storm. I'm going to say what I said the last time. It's a weather forecast, it's not an exact science. It could be less, it could be more, but we stand at the ready, prepared uh, to fight this latest storm. So with that being said, I'm gonna bring up the legendary, many of you seen in many years, in the Philadelphia area, um, long time meteorologist, more importantly, Atlantic City resident, Tom LeMay. Tom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the best way to uh, prepare you is to tell you you've had experience, like a couple days ago. And with that experience, uh, you get a chance, I think, the best way to do it is to compare what you have re recently experienced as to what you are going to experience. And uh, with that in mind, I'm going to, and I know Rebecca likes uh, bullet points, and so do I, it's my Marine Corps training. Uh, we get to the point here now. First of all, the uh, storm, everybody wants to know how much. Is that the first question everybody wants to know? How much are we going to get? Well, let me tell you, it's going to be half as much, which means three to six inches. Now, I say three to six inches, as the mayor referred to, could be less, could be more. If you're right along the immediate border, if you're on the beach, and maybe a couple blocks inland, eh, one or two inches less, maybe. But it really doesn't matter because once you get up to three to four inches, it becomes a problem. Not as much of a problem as a foot, but it becomes a problem. So that's the first thing I want to point out, that it will be half as much instead of three to six, instead of six to 12, three to six, give or take, as the mayor said. Um, this will not be as long a storm as far as duration goes. The Monday storm, as I mentioned, which would happen would be, would be from sunup to sunset. This is going to be an overnight storm which will be from midnight to 6 a.m. 
Now, it could continue a couple of hours beyond 6 a.m. simply because we get what is called wraparound winds. In other words, it brings in the moisture that has developed, even though it's offshore, it brings it, wraps it around, and brings it back inland again. So you could have continuing snow as late as 8 a.m., but the heaviest snow will fall between 1 and maybe 4, 5 o'clock in the early morning hours of tomorrow. Now, the heaviest snow, and it comes in bursts, and the best way to explain this is, in the summertime, you could have rain showers on Pacific Avenue and sunshine on Arctic Avenue. Well, you're not gonna get any sunshine, but you could get heavier bursts of snow in certain sections of our coverage area, whereas others don't get it. It's called bursts of snow, and they're actually, uh, they're like a downburst in the summertime, only this time it's snow. So the variation between three and six gives you a ballpark figure based on situations like that could happen, downburst. Um, overnight, and it will be on a Friday instead of a Monday. Now, Kirk just made, well, could affect city health risks, city workers, city offices, school closings. I don't know, it's conjecture maybe to think that uh, offices, schools have a tendency to close on Friday more than they would on a Monday or Tuesday, and especially with all these closings that have happened because of COVID. So I'm just saying that it may factor into the decisions. Because Also, because by 6 a.m., you will absolutely know what you're dealing with if you have to make your decisions by 6 a.m. or by 6 p.m. tonight for that. I don't think what I'm saying now is going to change a whole lot. So you can move accordingly. Now, in the aftermath of the storm, it'll be very cold. Matter of fact, temperatures will not go above freezing until Sunday. This has a lot to do with street uh, conditions. Once the snow is cleared, you're going to, it, and this will be a powdery snow. If you remember last storm we had, it was a little heavy when you first started and it was tough to shovel. I think this snow texture will be of a powdery so that when the winds pick up, and they will pick up like they did the last storm, after the snow has fallen, the winds got stronger, but they'll be from the northwest and that will bring in colder air and that will reinforce the cold air that's already in place. And as I said, temperatures will not go above freezing until Sunday. So once the snow clears, the effort should be made to make sure that your road, your sidewalks are free, uh, frozen free. Whatever you put down, salt, whatever, would really help quite a bit once you get the snow cleared. And you're gonna be fighting drifting snow but not as much drifting snow, simply because the content is not gonna be as much as it was on Monday. So that's the good news about that. And in comparison, once again, and I try to let you compare what you experienced as to what you're going to experience. Um, so surfaces cleared will hard freeze overnight, I mean, during the day. Now, even though the sun will be out on Friday, and believe it or not, we're getting more sunshine now than we were in December. And the stronger sun can work down on roadways that are free of snow. They can refreeze and become ice. However, if they have a deterrent, whatever that deterrent is, whether it's salt, whatever it is, goes a long way in keeping those streets from freezing once they are free of snow. Um, as I said, the winds will pick up after the snow ends, six or eight o'clock in the morning, and it will be very cold and below freezing cold until Sunday. Um, no matter what I say, there are a lot of people <laughs> who wanna know, well, I'd like to know this. So if there's anything you'd like to know, any questions, I'm open to questions now. I try to dumb down it and make it as easy for people to understand. I refuse to say the word polar vortex and things like that because <laughs> what the heck's a polar vortex anyway? So, any questions? Chief? What, what's the temperatures, uh, the highs for and lows on Saturday and Sunday? As I said, temperatures will stay below freezing until Sunday. They'll be in the 20s overnight, uh, inland, maybe in the upper teens, and uh, where there is more snow. Another uh, situation that's different this time, 
there, it, this snowfall would probably be more uniform. In other words, you're not going to get four inches here and 15 inches here. This is pretty much because it's a quick hitting storm and it's just going to be pretty evenly spread out over the area. But your temperatures are, are going to stay below freezing uh, until Sunday. And of course, the wind chills, you know, wind chill affects people different ways. Um, same as heat index. Some people can handle the heat better than others. And some people don't feel the chill as much as other people do, depending on your body makeup and your uh, body temperature and your ability to uh, for your body to create heat. Any questions? Thank you, Tom. As I said, uh, I don't think uh, things are going to change much, if only because this is a very fast-moving storm. I mean, it's not going to slow down and then try to decide what it's going to do next. And of course, then you got to decide what you're going to do next. This is being picked up by a very strong jet stream, which is uh, the uh, air above that moves storms at the surface. And uh, this should be out of here. It'll be offshore by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, if not before that. But as I said, wraparound snow could still continue. And all that will do is reinforce the cold air and keep temperatures below zero, uh, below freezing. Thanks. So if there's no other questions, I'm, I'm good. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Crystal Lewis, the Assistant Director of Public Works. Uh, Paul Jerkins will be joining me. He is the Director of Public Works. I'm just going to speak on the deployment of the Public Works personnel for this impeding storm. Our crews were deployed this morning at, well, this afternoon, at 12.30 this afternoon, and they've been on the streets all day because they're still dealing with the aftermath of the first storm. Um, crews will be grinding the streets throughout the course of today. The, if we don't, are not familiar with the prop, process or proper process of brining, brining is the mixture of salt and water mixtures, and we use that to actually brine streets so that it would um, adhere to the surfaces prior to any other snow or any ice hitting it. And then the ice won't be so hard to actually distract from the actual um, surfaces. As far as working around the clock, our public works team will be working around the clock for the duration of today. They will actually bring in other troops to come in at 12. They'll start their shift at 12 this evening up until the rest of the morning. We're looking to try and bring in contractors that will assist us at 5 a.m. in the morning today. So what we're asking for the residents is just patience. Just be patient with the teams. We will hit every street, every area today. We're just asking for your patience. If you have any um, streets that you feel like we haven't touched, you're more than welcome to call the office. We will send a crew out there as soon as possible. We just thank you for your patience and the up, um, in this opinion, I'm sorry, this impeding storm. Do you have anything you would like to add? Yep. Thank you very much. At this time, Chief Evans will come and speak on the actual storm process. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Crystal, mm -hmm. Director Jerkins. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we started the process of planning for today's storm uh, right before the other storm hit us, uh, before Monday. We got word that there was another storm coming um, out of the Pacific into the West Coast and started proceeding across the, across the country. So as we were dealing with uh, our last storm several days ago, we were also preparing for another one that would hit us several days later. Um, so uh, we've definitely been, been testing our capabilities and our resources. And, uh, you know, our team uh, has performed very well. Uh, we had some uh, assistance from uh, not only our, our county and state officials, um, but uh, organizing the departments from the police, um, fire, EMS, uh, public works. Uh, the coordination effort um, has, has gotten that much smoother as we prepare for this storm. Uh, a couple things I would just like to follow up on uh, that Tom spoke about earlier, that it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold for the next couple days. So Atlantic City is called the Code Blue. Uh, from now to through Sunday. Um, so what that does is that opens up the services for our homeless community and for people um, who would need shelter. Uh, we have shelters available 
um, through, through the rescue mission and some of our um, uh, community resources and outreach programs. So we have called a cause code blue until uh, Sunday. Another thing, uh, as Crystal spoke about, um, public works crews will be out um, early in the morning. And Tom spoke, this, is, this event will be primarily a late night, early morning event, which is going to be in our favor because there'll be a lot of cars off of the road. So the plows will be able to operate a lot quicker and, and more efficiently. Uh, one thing we are going to ask our residents to please do not park on the main arteries. Uh, move your cars um, to the side streets. We also have the Wave parking garage, um, as been mentioned, is available to put park your cars in there for free. Um, and it, it is important to not park on the snow, uh, the emergency evacuation routes, um, which they are listed on our website. So please go to our website, you'll see the full list of the streets um, that we do not want you to park on during snowstorms. Okay, the, um, another thing we want to remind people of as these storms approach is, is prepare yourself. Have emergency kits. Um, the winds aren't going to be real severe as, as previous storms, but there's still a chance for power outages. And this is always a good time to tell uh, our residents and, and you know, express to the community that you need to prepare for emergencies. Have that emergency kit. You can go to ready.gov and, and they'll have several different lists of emergency preparedness kits that you can have from keeping your um, and extra food, extra water, extra batteries, extra radios, uh, prescriptions, um, clothing if needed, uh, your flashlights, some of the essentials that you need and everyone should have an emergency preparedness kit. So um, this storm, as we do with all our storms, we, we conduct briefings beforehand, such as we've had one uh, earlier today, we'll have another one this evening. Um, we'll be coordinating with our county officials, our county OEMs, as well as our state OEM partners um, to make sure that we can get um, access to make sure that we have our roads clear as quickly as possible. And the last thing to follow up on is, as Crystal spoke about this, we just asked our residents to be patient. You know, when the snow comes down, there takes, there's a process to ensure that we have our most critical infrastructure um, plowed first, such as our, our hospitals and our utilities, and then our schools, and then our main arteries, and then out into the community. So we, can, we just ask you to be patient and we'll get there um, and make sure that we can uh, plow your roads so people can traverse through the city safely. Thank you. So now I'm going to hand it back over to the mayor for some closing comments. All right, so that, that's my, my apology. Uh, Chief Sarkos is uh, Officer in charge, Sarkos. So just disqualified to yourself for employee of the year in 2020. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Atlantic City Police Department will be fully staffed and operational for this snowstorm. We have several vehicles that are capable of driving and, and inclement weather that we will have out and ready to go. But I would like to remind the public to please refrain from driving during the inclement weather if you can do so. During this last snowstorm, we did have uh, numerous weather related motor vehicle accidents. So I would like to ask the public, if you don't have to drive, it's best not to drive during these conditions. It takes a little bit of while for public works to get out there and clear the roads of both snow and ice. A lot of times you don't see the ice that's out there, but it's very dangerous. If you do have to drive, please accelerate and decelerate slowly. Make sure your tires are properly full of air and allow yourself extra distance between the vehicle in front of you. Thank you. All right, well, this sums up our 2 p.m. briefing on the uh, storm. Uh, we will have another briefing after 6 o'clock when we have the latest information from the National Weather Service, and that way we can make a more informed decision. But we won't, as mayor of the great city of Atlantic City, this administration is being proactive, delivering this information to its residents, and we're going to be proactive with our partners. Um, this administration's foundation is built on partnerships, and we won't hesitate to call on them to give us any type of help that we need, that, that we would need, including, um, you know, asking CRDA for the wave parking garage again, if we feel it's necessary. So this is it for now. Uh, after 6 p.m., we will come live to you again to give you the latest from the National Weather Service. Thank you.